Thank you very much. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Stick out your bang Welcome to the Carl Weber Show. It's the first, first podcast. Well, my first, first podcast. And I'm nervous. I am nervous. I know the stage. I know the cameras. I don't know podcasts. But it's the first Carl Weber podcast. And I got an amazing guest. First of all, let me introduce my producer, Nanto. Yo, 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 I didn't have the mic, uh, but it's fine. <laughs> Are you alright? Are you alright, brother? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Are you ready for the first Call Weber podcast? Hell yes. Oh, nah, no, I just sure. want to say welcome to, to Cape Conscious Media. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you. We um, we were colleagues, colleagues at the Good of FM. That's correct. I'm looking forward to um, your experience of radio, TV, television, all... All that, that experience coming to podcasting, um, welcome to the platform, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I'm so proud, so uh, honored, and uh, so privileged to have my very first guest in studio, none other than Lana Krauster. Hi, Paul. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you? You are, you are just amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. You've been dominating not only South Africa, but you've been dominating the world. Working on it, yes. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lana Krauss, a singer, songwriter, producer, band leader, lecturer, music educator, and consultant, and actor, and everything. Alles but malas. I love that. <laughs> yeah. 20 years in the industry. Yes, man. Uh, what can I say? It's it, blink and it still feels like yesterday, and I still look 26, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, 20 years in yeah. the arts in South Africa. Wow. Wow. Can you believe it? It is an accomplishment. It is, I mean, South African industry, the, the entertainment industry is rough. Yes, in general. extremely. It's a tough show. It's a tough act. It's, it's just very difficult. Mm. But you made it. Yeah. How has the past 20 years been? I mean, has Oof. it been a roller coaster up and down? It's definitely been more down than up. Yeah. But I've worked hard consistently. Um, I've improved my craft. I practice. I still yeah. to this day practice. And I, I, I keep myself... Not, I don't keep myself down, but I make sure that yeah. I, there's always something new to learn and there's always a new challenge. So I try yeah. and stay on top of all the things sure. um, because that's how, that's how it never gets boring to me or, or, or anything. And at the bottom line, it's just that I'm passionate about yeah. the arts. So. Yeah. So we're going to go to the, the, how it all started and all those kind of things. But I mean, you guys just uh, launched your album, the Lady Day Big Band yes. uh, album was yes. launched last month. Yes. Exciting stuff. Very exciting. All lady uh, big band. Yes. All woman professional musicians, 22 piece jazz big 22 band. 22 piece. Yep. Who's playing the tambourine? Nobody at the moment. Do you want a tambourine <laughs> player? Do you have a wig? I do not. <laughs> So we're going to get into that in a bit. Uh, but I mean, uh, Lana, tell me, where, where did it all start? Oof, okay, so I born and raised in Belha, yeah. um, which a lot of people refer to as the flats, which is fine. Erika Township is what it's known as on Google Maps. Mm. Um, grew up there, born and raised, mom and dad, you know, middle class, worked their way up from nothing um, to provide for me and my brother, older brother. Um, went to school, fell into ballet classes, choir, and just always loved to sing. I just, oh, there was always music yeah. playing in our house. Um, Ingelbert Hamperdink, if anybody oh, knows yeah. who that is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> always playing. So my mom was always playing music and she said one day I just started, I was like two years old and I just started singing along. Yeah. Um, and she was like, oh my God, am I imagining this? And then one day my dad came home and my mom was like, just watch this. Yeah. So she put the song on and I went up to the old school, that old school Kenwood, you know, I'm aging yeah. myself, old school <laughs> Kenwood, you know, LP players. And she says that I plugged the mic in myself and just started singing. Yeah. And that's, that's where it all started. Ever since then, I've just yeah. been singing, dancing, performing. It was always just a fun thing to me. And then when I was 13, I joined um, a youth band called the Bellhome Music Collective. Yeah. Um, and... The manager, Keith Tabisha, he was like, you, I told him, I really love doing this. I love yeah. being on stage. I love performing. And he was like, you know, you can do this as a career, right? You know, you can yeah. study and you can like, and I'm like, people will pay me to do something that I love. Isn't work supposed to be yeah. strenuous and nine to five yeah. and arduous and all that? And he was like, and from that day, that was the game changer for me. It's been music ever since. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of artists in South Africa, even abroad, we start out in the church. Was that an influence on your on your music? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
the streets, I mean, Whitney always, but the streets yeah. were an influence on the music. I was very yeah. much like my brother is like the coolest person in the world to me. And he was the one that introduced me to like hip hop, neo soul, all of that. Yeah. My mom and my dad introduced me to like, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire, yeah. soul, funk, Marvin Gaye, all of that kind of mm. stuff. Shaka Khan. Um, so the influences are vast, but I yeah. definitely did not start in the church. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's basically everyone's story. Myself as a comedian, I mm-hmm. started my comedy career also not in the church. Oh, amazing. Uh, no, well, not amazing because, I mean, who starts a comedy career in the church? I mean, that would be unique yeah, that if you did be. that. And I mean, um, okay, so you get all the uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, mm-hmm. Temptations, mm-hmm. all those kind of influences. And then your genre today yeah. is jazz. So, not exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is where it gets complicated. So, because I grew up on the scene in Cape Town... It was very evident that it became evident to me that the more versatile I am, the more work I'll get. So um, I started out in the clubs uh, when I was very, very young Mm. and singing party music, top 40, Zs numbers, you know, Zs. And then I went and studied jazz um, at UCT. So there's that influence plus like my pop r&b influence all of that and then i've gone through phases of different sounds but i label myself as a singer songwriter Mm. and when people ask about genre i'm like i do everything yeah you know yeah versatility and then at what age did you basically write your first song because that's a big deal yeah my first song so i like actual written down yeah was uh, i think it was like 11 or 12 and I had been in music classes and it was about, yeah. obviously about the boy that I had a crush on because, you know, that's all <laughs> you know yeah. at that time. Um, but I'm, I've been making up little songs while I'm playing, yeah. so, like while I'm playing with my toys and stuff. Yeah. Since as long as I can remember, like three, four years old. So, I mean, besides, <laughs> so you were always a singer from the age of six. You, that was your passion, right? Yeah. But I mean, as kids, we grow up, I mean, I wanted to be a fireman, policeman. What was your, your ambitions? What do you... You yeah. know... <sighs> I think it was, I stuck with it because number one, I'm good at it. <laughs> mm, of course. And uh, number two, like I, there wasn't anything else that I was or have been passionate about more than music and performing and being on stage. Yeah. Anything that relates to creativity and music, I'm, I'm all in. Mm. Um, so yeah, and don't, like, don't worry. You know, I, I am a colored woman. Mm. There has been more people discouraging me from mm. the music industry than encouraging me. Yeah. But at the end of the day, because my mother and my mommy is very rebellious. Yeah. And yeah, I'm like, so, I want to do this thing. So this is what I'm going to do. So you, you never had a plan B? Nope. That's dope. That's no, it's not. Dope, it's yeah. scary. It's fucking scary. Oops. It's no, scary. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's scary. But yeah, I never had a plan B. Sure. That's so awesome. Yeah. So what, what, what would you say? What is the, the plus of that? Mm-hmm. And... and or the negative of that, seeing that you, you probably had friends that, that had a nine to five that do mm. the music thing. What would you say you had an advantage and what do you say you would have a disadvantage? Um, I'd say like, you really have to have hair on your teeth to be a musician or a freelancer in any field. But for me, I liked being my, I always liked being my own boss. I like, um, you know, I just, there was just something about like me being in control of a, a creative project that just stood out to me. I like that I can make my own hours. Mm-hmm. I like that I can create my own projects. I like that I, you know, my creativity doesn't have any boundaries when I'm working on my own stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the thing that puts me off the nine to five is is. You don't really get to be yourself yeah, all sure. day for most sure. of the day. You have to wear things that you wouldn't necessarily wear. You have to engage with people that you have to see every day, whether you like them or not. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, true. guys, that sucks. Like that for me is enough to like be like, nah, it's all right. Yeah. I'd rather go the entrepreneurship route and carve out a career for myself out of nothing. So having said that, I mean, as an entertainer myself, I know how hard it is to make that end of the month salary. Oof. And as a singer, actor, comedian, whatever industry you're in in South Africa, it's yeah, tough. Baby. I mean, people pay you with a six pack, they pay you with a, you know, it's the old dop system. And the I mean, dope system, it's, yeah. it's rough in South or Africa. Or the diet system. You know, <laughs> so uh, do you think entertainers, do you think we accept the bare minimum just for exposure at the end of the day? 
I think that there is a very terrible myth that's been floating around forever that reaches every Cape Townian musician every now and then that states that if you want to get anywhere, you need to do stuff for free so that you can yeah. get exposure. Mm. That is bullshit. Yeah. If you've worked on your talent and you've honed it and you're really to, ready to put it on a stage, like name your price, know yeah. your worth. Um, yes, people are going to be like, oh, but it's for experience. And the thing is like, if you think back to the past 30, 40 years of Cape Townian music alone, how many of our musicians have passed away with yeah. nothing, mm. you know? from doing gigs for exposure, yeah. from doing this one a favor and that one a favor. People love the music, they love the musicians, but they yeah. don't want to pay them. True. You know, exposure doesn't pay the bills at the end True. of the month. So for me, my thing is always when I teach, when I was, teach, when I was a lecturer, I would, I would tell my students for music business entrepreneurship class, I would tell them, know your price, you've worked hard. I used to practice 10, 15 hours mm. a day mm. when I was at varsity. Yeah. That's more than 10,000 hours. And for years, I had to beg people to pay me yeah. what I was worth because they didn't see, yeah. they didn't recognize. Now that I'm based in New York yeah. and there's nobody like me here, mm -hmm. you know, now they're like, oh, is this enough money for mm -hmm. you? No, let's give you some more. I'm like, yes, sister. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I want to get to the New York thing, but I mean, just with the whole artist thing and getting mm. paid and stuff like that. I, I mean, there were, there's, there's times in any artist's career yeah. where you need to pay rent. Yes. And then you compromise on your, your, your value and yeah. how much you're supposed to get paid. Yeah. And people, you know, I've, I'm sure you heard it a million times. People come with this thing, ooh, it's good exposure. It's going to look good on your resume. No, 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 no. Unless it's the Cape Town International Jazz yeah. Festival yeah. or, you know, you're singing with uh, George Benson or yeah. Questlove or whoever. No, mm. what are you going to get out of it? Like always, that was always my thing. I would always, when somebody would say that to me, I would always sit and think about it. How does this benefit me, yeah. if not financially? Yeah, true. And yes, I have done gigs where I waived the fee or whatever, yeah. but that was because I decided it was worth it to do it for free or worth the relationship, the working relationship yeah. or whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, it was tough. Like I... Like I was saying to you, I made sure that I was versatile mm. so I could do the jazz gigs. I could do the background Sunday lunch yeah. things. I can do the on stage at Galaxy jumping mm. around. I can do all the things, but there are months that are dry. And yeah. then those are the months where you turn to teaching, you turn to mentoring, yeah, sure. you like consulting, whatever you can. Um, that was me. Other yeah. people turn to other things, nine to fives and all that. Yeah. And yes, you can be. So the thing about the nine to five thing is you can work nine to five and be a musician, but you are compromising something yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, your balls are paid, but how's your heart, man? Yeah, so, so gone are the days of being a purist. I mean, even in, in comedy, you cannot just be doing one thing. Yeah. You need to be versatile. Absolutely. Right? And um, so the New York, you are now living in New York for three years. Yes, almost three years. Three years, but before we get there, I'm so excited about that, but before I get there, you got a bachelor's degree in music, yeah. uh, postgraduate diploma in jazz performance from the University of Cape Town. Yeah. Um, how many years was that? So the undergrad was four years and the postgrad was two years, so it's basically like a master's level yeah. performance degree. Yeah. Six years of my life studying jazz. And your parents, uh, absolutely, they supported you. You know, at first it was shaky. So the first yeah. thing was I was very involved in school. I was at one of those schools that have all the things and I was in all the things. So I had to basically do a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> to convince yeah. my parents to let me take a gap year. Yeah. <laughs> and like I had to promise that I won't get lazy because, you know, yeah. every colored parent's worst nightmare, uh, a gap year allegedly. Um, but uh, yeah, I went to music college. I was focused. The six years were amazing. Um, and they eased up on it when I started paying for my own school fees okay. <laughs> from <Yeah>. gig money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just from myself, um, starting out in comedy, my parents are very old school. Mm. So they never, like, oh, what, you want to do comedy? You want to be, you want to tell jokes for a living? Yeah. So for our older generation, it's a tough It's, kind it's of a thing touchy to, subject, yeah. To reconcile. Um, so basically, so you studied, you got you, and then you moved to New York. So this is my thing with New York. You've been there for about three years? Yes. No accent yet? No, what the? No. No, no man. No, my brother, you know how much uh, how much life I get out of this Cape Townian accent yeah. in, in America. Yo, I think I even go even deeper into yeah. it. It's, it's awesome. And tell me, what, um, what part of New York do you live in? I live in Brooklyn. 
Brooklyn. Yeah. What? Down the corner from where Biggie Smalls grew up. What? <laughs> is that considered the Bronx? No, the Bronx is like at the top. Yeah. And then here's Manhattan. And then yeah. at the bottom is Brooklyn. It's super big. It's like the size of the Western Cape. It's huge. Wow. Yeah. And so tell me the, the difference. Just uh, entertainment, uh, I mean, singing wise, performance wise, mm. New York, South Africa, Cape Town. Yeah. Is it worlds apart? Yes. Uh, when I was growing up here, it was you either perform on like on a contract or you're going to be a teacher. And those are the only yeah. two options. In New York, everything is an option. Everything yeah. is an opportunity. There's so much to do. And if you're enterprising and entrepreneurial and you know how to hustle, yeah. New York is the perfect place if you're an artist or a creative. Yeah. It's the best. And you and the thing about New York is that everybody's there for the same reason. So I have made so many connections and friendships from people who are like, oh, you're a singer. Um, my friend so-and-so is a producer. You mm. guys should link up and do a song. And then people actually link up and you actually make a song mm. and you create art together. So everybody is always organizing and linking people. And that's what I love the most. Yeah. It's just like this community of creativity and yeah. everybody understands that this place for everybody to thrive. Yeah. So us as uh, South Africans, we, we, we have this inferior complex to the rest of the world. Mm. I mean, just moving over there that first month, the first yeah. two, two months. Yeah. What did it feel like? I mean, it must have been overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I had been there. Luckily, you know, music has taken me a lot of places. So I had been to New York a couple of times um, for business and pleasure. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> So moving there is definitely a different situation. So I, um, I put myself through graduate school yeah. after COVID because I was like, if I survive this thing, I'm going to go do my master's yeah. overseas, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to move to New York because that's always been the dream, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was hard to do after COVID because I had to live with most yeah. of my savings. Sure. It, was, it was really rough, right? And then I got COVID before, like the week I was supposed to get vaccinated. Yeah. And like I had lost, so I went into New York with long COVID effects on my brain. So I couldn't remember yeah. anything. My memory was messed up. Like it was, I couldn't, if I studied, I couldn't retain anything. Yeah. So that in itself was one thing. Mm -hmm. Then the depression that comes from that because you're used to being an A student and now your brain isn't yeah. working how you used to. And you're at grad school in yeah. America where you really already feel inferior. Yeah. That was another thing. And then I'm going to the school that's known as a money school. Yeah. Lots of rich, privileged, privileged kids, you know, with lake houses and six yeah. cars and blah, blah, blah. And I'm the poor kid from Africa. So there's mm. that also. Even though I've been working for 20 years, yeah. I'm still the poor kid from Africa. Yeah. So there was a lot of things to reconcile and there was a lot of things to work through. Thank God for mm. therapy. Thank God for medication. Um, mental health matters. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but I... Must say, the first two months I was there, a friend of mine has been living, he's South African and he's been living in New York for like almost 12 years now. The first thing he said to me was like, Lana, closed mouths don't get fed. Yeah. So you need to learn to advocate for yourself. He was like, yeah. that South African humility vibes is yeah. not going to work here. You can yeah. be humble and confident at the yeah. same time. And that's yeah. the vibe. And ever since that day, yeah. like it's not been, it's not been easy like I can tell you intent, I'll tell you guys intense yeah. stories later. Um, but like really starting from the bottom on your own as a single woman in another country while putting yourself through school. Mm. <laughs> Listen, yeah. man, that's a movie <laughs> in yeah. its own. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, besides New York, where else have you performed in the world? Um, uh, in Africa, it's been Swaziland, Lesotho, yeah. Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Malawi, um, Reunion Islands, then globally, I was in Scotland for I mm. flew to Scotland for a performance. I performed in Washington D.C. I performed in um, New York a couple of times. I actually performed in Barbados also, yeah. which was liquor. Um, yeah, not that many places. Wait, must I count the karaoke stuff also? Everything. Okay, then it's then it's Sydney, Australia. Then it's Bali. Then it <laughs> the so, list goes so, on. so speaking about karaoke, so you pitch up. <laughs> Just a night out with your buddies. Uh, they all this karaoke. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, next up, uh, Lana Krauss. Uh, and you go and you yeah. close the place down. I mean, I don't mean to, but yeah. it's also liquor to, you know, yeah. to sing when and enjoy karaoke when nobody knows who you are. But you know what you're capable <laughs> of. And you know, right, I'm going to shut this thing down. Yeah, I'm going to check. Yes. Sometimes, I mean, Jamutma's off show. Yeah. 
Ma, you, uh, you must. No, you, you must. must. I agree. Absolutely. Must. So, uh, 20 years in the industry, they say uh, overnight success. Do you think, I mean, is there such a thing as an overnight success? No. Yeah. I, like, look, the way the things work here, anybody that's mainstream in South Africa, they come from priv privilege. They yeah. come from money. They have the resources to get them onto the mainstream, right? But if you're somebody who doesn't come from any privilege, mm. Shaykhan Hadvik, whether yeah. you want to or not. And I've seen a lot of people that I came up with fall by the wayside because yeah. it was just too much pressure, too much hard work, not enough return on investment, yeah. Aldai Dinger. It's not for the faint-hearted at all. Yeah. But the five-minute overnight success, you, I would love that if yeah. it was that. Because even yeah. when I was on The Voice, I think it was 2017, even that, like, people don't know that to be on The Voice, people in the industry have to recommend you. Yeah. So by that point already, I had done backing vocals for everybody. Yeah. Karen Zoid, Arno Carstens, Toya DeLazy, Chad Simon. Yeah. Like, you name them, I probably did backing vocals yeah. for them. So everybody in the industry knew me, um, and that's how I got on the show. But the general public will not think, oh, that's where you got your start yeah. in Asi Sony. Yeah, so that's what I meant by overnight success. Mm -hmm. I mean, people only know you from the time you blow up. Yeah. But they don't know all the work. The yellow, the you iceberg. Know, the iceberg yeah. scenario. They see the peak, they don't see everything else underneath. Yeah, and it's coat that one. I mean, you didn't do, uh, the, what's the other one, idols, all that? You didn't, I did. You did. In 2009, back in the day. I did it. And are, they, are they as hectic as... It's very hectic. It? I didn't enjoy the fact that they treated you like you were nothing just to get reactions yeah. for yeah. ratings. True. The difference between them and the voice, the voice treated us really well. We had rest days. Yeah. We had structured call times. We had rehearsal times. We had... Mm. It was just a really, really fun experience behind yeah. the scenes. So listen, the Lady Day Big Band. Yeah. LDBB. I see. Established 2018? Yes, sir. You are the founding member? Absolutely. Right, so with uh, Amanda Tiffin mm -hmm. and Kelly Bell. Yes, ma'am. I mean, so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here we go. <laughs> yes, so tell, tell me what sparked all of this. So 2018, there was this worldwide, um, I don't know if you remember, there was the Me Too movement. Yeah. And uh, another incredible South African saxophonist who's now based in Norway, Shannon Mode, she started a Facebook group um, focusing on jazz, women, women, women jazz musicians, or female yeah. jazz musicians, right? So it was a closed group, and we started talking about, like, basically she created this space where you could talk about if you had any negative experiences as a jazz musician yeah. working in the game. Because most of the time, as a woman, you're the only one in a band full of men. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, people started, women started talking about the things that had been done to them, you know, like, you know, it starts like from like sexual innuendos to yeah. literal sexual abuse, emotional abuse, disrespect, just you yeah. know, like inappropriate touching, inappropriate behavior, just, just disrespect blatantly. Yeah. Um, and some of, and some people actually shared that they, and these are people that are brilliant at the instruments and studied and did all that. Some of them even stopped playing music completely because yeah. these experiences were that traumatic. Yeah. So then we had, um, an in-person meeting with some of the Cape Town members of that group. And we were like, we need to do something. We need to do something like this is, this is not okay. Like we need to call out the boys without, you know, well, we need to call out the boys. They need yeah. to know that this is not okay. Um, and I'm not somebody that can just sit by. Um, like I told you, I'm a rebel. So yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I can't believe that so many of my sisters in music yeah. feel unsafe mm. in a situation where you're supposed to feel the most safe. Yeah. You know, it's your work, it's your job, and you, you worked hard and you're supposed to be respected, but just the fact that you're a woman mm. makes you not worthy of respect on the bandstand, which is like yeah. such bullshit, obviously. Very old school vibes. So um, I always wanted to start my own big band, like, you know, I studied jazz. Yeah. And I said to Amanda, I was like, you know what, I think I'm just going to start my big band and do an yeah. all-woman thing. Because yeah. I'm tired of the boys. I'm tired of laughing at the inappropriate jokes. Yeah. I'm tired of the disrespect. I'm tired of it's my rehearsal, but they're talking yeah. over me and telling me how they're telling me about my music that yeah. I wrote. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like the mansplaining, like yeah. all of those kinds of things. And in music, you know, in the arts, we don't have HR. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. feel like you're alone when these things are sure. happening. So we started this group and uh, it became the Lady Day Big Band and Amanda, 
Amanda um, is the MD and writes and arranges for the band. So does Kelly Bell. I'm mm. the lead singer slash creative director slash yeah. Alice, Alice what Malice. Um, but yeah, we've been to, we've been around for six years now. And the whole point of it was to create something for little girls to see and be like, oh, a woman can play a trumpet. A woman yeah. can play the bass. A, a yeah. woman can play the drums because often girls are dissuaded from playing mm. Those kinds of things. And you'll see from schools level to varsity level, the numbers actually start dwindling yeah. in girls who pursue being a musician. And even more so from tertiary level to professional level. So we were like, okay, cool. First things first, something for girls to look up to, something for them to work towards, something to show them that you can yeah. be a professional musician in this industry in South yeah. Africa. Um, and then secondly, it's one of those things where it's a mentorship program. So whoever comes in through the band, yeah. it's not meant for them to stay there forever. Mm -hmm. The point is you come there, it's a safe space. You yeah. can make mistakes. You can do whatever you need to do. You learn from the older members. Mm -hmm. And which what a lot of our members have done is gone off and started their own, their own bands and yeah. their own projects and stuff, which is really cool. And you can literally see like the confidence growing mm -hmm. in the setting just because just because a woman feels safe yeah. enough to play her instrument. Um, yeah. And since then also, like it, you've, I've noticed that a lot of the other bands have started booking more women. So it won't just be like one woman in the band anymore. Mm. There'll be like two or three. Um, yeah, so my brother, said, my brother said to me the other day, he's like, you started a revolution. This is awesome. And I was like, mm, I did. It absolutely, it absolutely is. And I mean, it's a revolution that needed to happen. Absolutely. You know, I so mean, the Cape Town, the Cape Town music scene yeah. is very small. And I'm okay in Maka, Exactly. But, you know, there needs to be a level of respect. We yeah. all work super hard. Yeah. Why are you... Why do you feel so inclined to disrespect yeah. and think less of the woman yeah. that's probably True. more talented than you, worked harder, True. all of that? So that mentality had to change. Yeah. I also personally stopped booking men who yeah. were known to be offenders and who were disrespectful yeah. and all of those kinds of things. And I think because of that, you know, mm. when you mess with someone's money, they learn very yeah. quick. <laughs> so, I mean, change, change had to start change somewhere. Change had to start right? somewhere. Had to start somewhere. And I mean, subconsciously, I'm thinking about now... Um, so we have subconsciously male and female instruments. Yes. Like you think, okay, violins, female. Mm. Drums, guys. Mm. And that's just through years of indoctrination and yeah, stuff like absolutely. that. absolutely. And that's you guys are breaking down those stereotypes. Absolutely. Right. And also, I mean, I had an interview the other day on, on one of the tel uh, TV shows, and the guy asked me, like, how are you guys 22 women? Like, it yeah. must be so hectic, all the fights. And I was yeah. like, actually... Yeah. That is a stereotype. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. And after the show, I actually took him to the side and I was like, that kind of narrative mm. sure. is, is, is not acceptable anymore. Women coming together yeah. to fight for what? With who? For each other? Yeah. No. Yeah. We're, as a team, as a human unit, we're fighting to create space for yeah. other musicians, other women musicians to come yeah. and, and, and feel professional and feel safe and all of those kinds of things. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very much about like, Killing those negative gender yeah. stereotypes, it's ugh, we need to. so we old need school. To. So tell me your, the, the, the album, mm -hmm. it's called Livus Umoya. Livus Umoya. Explain that to me. Tell Zulu. me what it so means. Livus Umoya is a Zulu lyric from one of our songs. Yeah. Um, the song is called Ayo Ayo and it's the first track on the album. And it basically means awaken the spirit. So yeah. it's very much what the band stands for. We are awakening the spirit of all these mm. women who have just been like hiding behind the instruments or hiding their talents yeah. and just being like, Hey man, step up, take up mm. space. It's a joyful thing. Yeah. If this makes you happy, do it. Um, and yeah, Levo Sumoya, yeah. the whole album features um, South African music. So yeah. half of it was written by us, written and arranged by members of the band. Mm. The other half was just arranged and it's like, yeah. we've got like some essay classics like to Fintech Yo yeah. and, um, uh, but uh, we've got like a South African vintage medley. And so obviously Brenda Fuss is in there. Yeah, and of course. Just like, yeah, just yeah. liquor stuff to showcase not only our talents, but yeah. also like the brilliant music, m musicians and writers yeah. that we have. So you guys, um, I mean, you've collaborated with Karen Zoid, mm -hmm. Francho van Koch, and then you also collaborated with George Benson. Yes, my brother. What? <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> Are you insane? Joe, how was that? Amazing, obviously. I mean, I grew up listening, like every other colored kid yeah. on the flats, I grew up listening to George Benson. Yeah. You know, my dad and my mom were like big fans. So when I was at college, um, 
somebody from ESP Africa called called the head of yeah. jazz and was like, hey, George Benson needs backing vocalists because he's doing this Nat King yeah. Cole tribute. Um, do you have anybody? Mm-hmm. And then I was chosen and it was sure. very intense because yeah. it wasn't just like love, times love. Yeah. It was like, if I had to choose, mm-hmm. like very mm-hmm. close, tight Nat King Cole harmonies. I probably never practiced that all in my life, yeah. but... We were on stage with George Benson. Mm. It was awesome. Got to work with a man, shook his hand, took a picture. I had him sign my dad's Breezen LP. Yeah. <laughs> no? Yeah. yeah, no, I had to. <clears throat> I had to. Yeah, I know. My dad was like, what? Um, so while the cool thing about that was we were on the main stage at Jazz Fest and he still had time left in his set. Mm. So like 20 minutes left. So the man started doing, you know, his pop mm, songs, mm. Love Times Love, yeah. I'll Die Dinger. And I'm standing there and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So I'm like just mm. singing along, thinking our mics mm. is off. And then I heard my monitor <laughs> switch on and I'm like, oh, my mic is on. And I'm like, and he turns around and he looks and he just like gives me a thumbs up. I was like, ah, George Benson just gave me a thumbs up. But it's like one of those like, I will never forget that. For me, yeah. that was a huge deal. And I was like, yeah. oh, backing vocals is so fun. So let's do more of this. And then also Josh Groban. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I know. What? What? When what? To you say it, it's like, oh, yeah, I did this stuff. I oh. was in a community choir or something mm. with friends of mine from, no, 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 I'm talking, I'm talking shit. What was that? I was interning at mm. a production company. And the woman I was working with was friends with the guy who owned the few God who was friends yeah. with somebody on Josh Groban's team. They had the Soweto gospel choir booked for Joburg, but they didn't have a choir for Cape Town and PE. So she called me and she's like, Hey, do you want to sing backing vocals for Josh Groban? Mm-hmm. I'm like, who is this? What prank call is this? Yeah. She's like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, she's like, can you put a choir together? I'm like, cool. I called all my singer friends. I was like, guys, do you want to sing for Josh Groban? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And then we did two shows with him at Grand West, which was really fun, and um, one in PE. Nice. And yeah, he was lovely. He's lovely. He's super funny. He's such a mm-hmm. such a good guy. Yeah, very funny. Cock funny, actually. <laughs> so then Toya De Lazy as well, Anna Carson, Zaki Ibrahim. You, I mean, you, you're very accomplished. Thank you. Very accomplished. Um, I would ask you to sing, but I don't want to put you on the spot. Right? Uh-huh, it's okay. I mean, can you give us just like a verse? Or are we mental? Are we allowed to do that? Mm-hmm. What do you want me to give sing? Me, give me something. Give me an original. Uh huh. You know, sing me your, that first song you wrote. The first song I don't know. I definitely you don't remember. That. Okay, give me, give me, give me one of your, <laughs> give me one of your favorites. Okay, so this is funnily enough. Earlier you said subconsciously, and I was like, I have an album called Subconscious. Mm. Oh. So um, I'll sing something from the. Uh, let me see. Now you put me on the spot. I can't even remember my own <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, subconscious. I've been running from my mind. Cause I'm thinking all the time. All the time. Overthinking. Override what I'm thinking. See, I could blame this on you. But I can't live in a lie, I need my truth. What is true? What's this feeling? Here's the proof to revealing. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Smooth, soulful sounds of Lana. Crouched up. What? You're funny. No, you are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're listening to uh, Lana Krause Award uh, winning top prize in 2021, Mild and Guardian, top 200 uh, young South Africans category for arts and entertainment. Did you, that is something that you enter. Yes. Top 200. Yes. Right? Yes. So, of all the young people, you are in the top 200. <laughs> yeah. Most influential or most accomplished. Yeah. Young South Africans, yeah, in my field, top 200. Yo, guys. I mean, it would be nice if it had a cash prize because then I could have made more music. But it yeah. was liquid to see myself in the newspaper. <laughs> can, I, can I just interject? Yes, of course. Um, I think I, you're hundred percent right when when it comes to it. It doesn't it doesn't equate to money. But I wanna just remind you that the stereotype of of, of us colored people 
we don't we we, we gangsters we mm. we also uh, we the tronco for mm. but you you that accomplishment is just one of many that is breaking down that stereotype man yeah. and i just want to personally say thank you for doing that man you know what i'm saying because it's it's and i i, I said this to an actor i think when she, uh, and whenever you go on a on an audition or wherever the wherever you are in the world yeah. just know that there's a community that I'm included in that's st- standing behind you that 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 that, 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 that mm-hmm. want you to achieve yeah. that needs you to achieve so so you're representing all of us man thank and you. thank you for that man Albert. No, you're so- listen you're making me cry here, my bro I didn't bring my tissues mm. but no 100% somewhere along on my journey I like little girls started coming up to me and being like I hear you from Belha I'm also from Belha and mm. I also like singing and I realized I had nobody to look up to that looked like me that was yeah. dark skinned like me had curly hair you know was curvy nobody looked like me that was doing well on the scene yes mm. we had Vicky Sampson and all those men so doing the things here and, here, here and there yeah. but there was nobody that I could identify with mm. and in that moment I realized when kids started coming up to me I realized this is bigger than me This isn't just about me. Yeah. It's breaking down stereotypes. It's letting people know that we're not I'm not going to lie. I am a bit of a gangster every now and then, <laughs> but only when I need to be. Um but yeah, like it's 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 such a necessary thing yeah. and it's not like I do stuff with the intention of, you know, getting a claim or attention or whatever. It's literally just I want to see if I can do this thing yeah. that people tell me I can't do and then I do it. Yeah. And it happens and then I'm like, okay, what's next? Yeah. That's why listening to you like rattling off my CV mm. is like, oh yeah, I did that. Oh yeah, I did that. Because once I'm yeah. done, I move on to the next challenge. Yeah. So, so that, that, that's what I wanted to ask. Because a lot of so today in the industry, entertainment, a lot of people chase. They want to be celebrities, and I have I am of the opinion that there's a difference between a performer and an and a celebrity. Absolutely. Because anybody can be a celebrity now. Absolutely. Anybody. You just need a good publicist. Yeah. True. So, uh, what's next for 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 Lana Krauser? Well, I'm figuring that out. You know, it's that whole like you just graduated from from yeah. school. So, what are you gonna do now with your yeah. life now that you have all the time? I definitely want to keep writing music. I want to start writing for other yeah. artists. Do more singing. Ca- I mean, songwriting camps. Um, yeah. I definitely want to take. I'm working on taking Lady Day Big Band on tour. Yeah. Because uh, I feel like it's a product that the world needs to see. Yeah. Also, the people, please listen, heed my words. South Africa is trending everywhere. Yeah. I I cannot explain to you enough how talented we as a people are yeah. naturally. I have seen mediocre people make lots of money and have yeah. big shows and brand deals and stuff. And then I'm like, oh, but I know so-and-so from, yeah. from Grassy Park that can do a better job, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Support, support, support your people, please. Yeah. Everybody else in the world is waiting to see what we're doing, what we're putting out next, except for us. Exactly. <laughs> so where can people find you, socials, uh, yeah, so all those kind of things? Um, I'm at Lana Krauster on Instagram and I have a Facebook page. Yeah. My website is www.lanakrauster.com. Lady Day Big Band also has a website, which is www.theladydaybigband.com. Um, yeah, yeah. Message, say hi, yeah. say we send support. Um, yeah, every every little bit yeah. of encouragement helps because there's a lot of hard times, strife and trouble that you have to like fight through yeah. to Absolutely. get to the prize. Absolutely. So yeah, I'd love to hear from your your viewers and your listeners. There we go. You guys heard it there. Uh, Lorna Krauss, Nantel, anything from your side? Um, no, nothing much. Um, yeah. Great job. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Thank Cole. you. Well um, done, Cole. You. Yeah, so yeah. guys, this is uh, uh, the Carl Weber Show. Uh, my very first guest. I'm so honored, so privileged. Oh. Lana Krauster. Thank you so much, Lady Cole. Day Big Band. Yeah. I'm forward to seeing more of you guys. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be doing this every week with different people. Uh, Lana's also going to be starring in a couple of movies coming up, she told me. <laughs> the series. Right? New York Undercover. Who knows? Who knows? SVU, Moss. Law and Order. But thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> 
Thank you, you are Carl. absolute pleasure, absolute talent, uh, someone we can be proud of and go out and support local guys. Uh, every week, a uh, different uh, entertainer, actor, singer, uh, rapper, comedian, uh, who, someone who works at Macro. I don't know anyone as yeah. possible. Anyone Your Braz cousin's sister that Muslim. lives down the road that has a band and the tickets are only 50 rand per person. Here we go. Oh, if Khalid. You, if oh, Khalid. You go to Khalid's yeah. show. If you, I mean, if you can afford to go to Ed Sheeran and Craig David, watch Craig David there sing with go. a backtrack, you can pay 50 rand. There to go, go support Khalid. There you heard it straight from Lana Krause. Please support <laughs> local guys. Thank you so much for my very first podcast. Lana, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Carl. You did very well. I'm very proud of you. The Carl Weber Show. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. Stick out your bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs>